Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Chingo Chats. Keep your politics at the door. If you like political talk, you know, freedom talk is what I call it. Go listen to RPT, Red Pill the Miles. It has its own RSS feed. But right now, this is Chingo Chats. We keep it non-political as best as we can. Because, yeah. you know, these days, bro, once you wake up and realize that Hollywood has been compromised, <laughs> Enos Cantor's game time has been reduced, uh, they cut the feed from the Boston Celtics uh, to, to China. Oh, word? They cut the feed every time he plays and shit because he be wearing them shoes talking about Taiwan. So the CCP don't want none of them rebellious free speech LeBron, he gonna he gonna he's gonna, oh, he gonna play his, his he's gonna play his position. Now he want to sell them Brown Browns out there in, in Beijing. Not only that, but they're gonna post every other post on ESPN on Instagram about LeBron. Like every other post is yeah. a LeBron post. Yeah, but Enos Cantor and, and the Celtics, so they've been cutting his time and they're not playing the Celtics games in China. So if you like that kind of talk, go listen to RPT. This is Chingo Chats and. We like to react to things in, in the news, brother. Um, first of all, shout out to everybody that came out to all the tour stops. Freedom of Speech Tour is a wrap. Shout like out Salt Lake kind City. Of, uh, patriotic music like dun, 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 something. Thank you. It's over. 2021. It's all about the freedom of speech. And, um, you know, if you pay attention, censorship is up. And like I was saying earlier, man, once you realize that, like, wait, Hollywood films are largely financed by the ccp and it's like wait is this propaganda like first you start to notice like man films are kind of whack lately like they just keep rehashing stuff but uh but yeah free speech man um it, w- it was a blast doing uh stand-up comedy and and just reminding people that um that uh you know the comedians they going after the comedians for a reason man uh our job is to find the line of what we can't talk about what's what's taboo what's controversial who you're not allowed to pick on so that we know how free are we really actually this, this is a great uh, jump off point um what where, where is that line Shingo? do you think there is a line you know let's just say when you first got into the comedy game or before you even did before when you were just an entertainer of all sorts you know sketches and music and mm-hmm. a public figure and you weren't doing stand-up yet, did you think to yourself, like, there's a line, you know, there's certain things that are untouchable, and then you got into it, and then we're going through this whole cancel culture era of our history? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, so when I was younger, uh, doing my rap thing, um, you know, anything political I was saying was very like, orale, this is stolen land, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, the it, it sounded good, and it felt good to, to just be like, they're hating on our primos, fool. But now you've grown and shit paying taxes, and you done grew up a little bit, and now you're looking at this disaster on the border, and now you're like, bro, I can't, I can no longer promote this. Yeah. You know, once you grow up, you like... Shit, you start feeling like you're the manager at Best Buy and your primos are like, come on, fool, let me return it. I know I don't have a receipt. And I was like, I know, fool. It's just, man, it's how they do, you know, that, man, fuck these rules, bro. I'm with you. I'm still your cousin. Those bits are still funny. Like, I still love you. I'm still your cousin. But, man, that's the policy here, bro. This is Best Buy, you know. And we just, you know, you can't have the toaster longer than 90 days. And I know I'm your primo and I'm here. I'm in the Best Buy. But, I, you know, we got rules, player. But, um... So back when I was starting, it was PC culture. It was politically correctness. Now, my brother-in-law, who's older, he's ex-Marine. He's like pretty much been Republican. I think ever since Ronald Reagan in the 80s and him being in the military, he's been very... um, Pro-America. Yes, and very weary of communism and socialism and and very suspicious. How much older is he? He's 13 years older than me. So... So, you know, that's a, they're from a different era, man. They cut from a different cloth. They were, they were, they had to be tougher back then. You know, my era, you know, you got Nintendo and shit. Back then, they were worried about Russia and the Cold War, and it was like the arms race, and, you know, the propaganda was different in the schools, right? But anyway, long story short, I know he would always make little comments about like, man, this stupid fucking politically correct bullshit making everybody pussies. Yeah. You know what I mean? They pussy of pussifying America. And I'd be like, bro, relax. Like, <laughs> like, hey, like relax. <laughs> Put the Calma flag that. away, brother. Like, do you have to wear the, wear the Marine hat everywhere? And, uh, you know, now that I'm older. Do you have to, how rude. Do you what? have to wear that United, you know, Forces hat? Hey, but now I wear like my American flag hat yeah, and shit in the, in the airport. And they'd be like, thank you for your service. And I'm like, I just like to represent, but I ain't served. Just fucking some, on some stolen valor shit, start putting medals and shit on you. I'm just a professional shit talker. That's how I contribute to protect our country. But, um, but yeah, man, so I don't know what the line is. Obviously, Dave Chappelle, he's learned a thing or two. 
Uh, Lil Boosie, he's learned a thing or two about like what you can't say and what yeah, you can't do. Yeah, but man, that's that's the beauty about comedy, Kevin Hart. right? All these people, all these modern, you know, uh, these modern killers, like these modern entertainment icons, right? But then you go back, let's just say 15, maybe 20 years, maybe even less. Not quite like Eddie Murphy early days, but let's just say Sam Kinison or, uh, you know, even Louis C.K., Dice Clay, these oh. people that were saying shit that was so off the wall, and you never heard. I mean, maybe oh. because of the internet and publications were different. I think we just had. It, I know this is sounding very RPT type of conversation, but in terms of culture, we hadn't been all the way compromised yet. So totally. So, so in other words, all the woke stuff, like uh, Ibram X Kendi and all these anti-racist books or whatever mm-hmm. um, that Brian Callen was speaking about on, yeah. on T Fat K. Um, well, that was Conspiracy Social Club. And oh, that's what that was. Yeah. My bad. Okay. The clip came through so small. Bro. Weird. Yeah, sometimes it does that on iPhones. It compressed it. I, maybe my data. I don't ran up my data. <laughs> but um, Unlimited uh, is expensive. You know? Okay, so so for example, here's what I want to say. Old school Eddie Murphy stand-up. Mm-hmm. Pff, bro, you got to go back and hear some of this shit. Like, this is the shit I grew up on. This is the shit I grew up on. Like, some of them jokes, he you can't play that today. Oh, you know what? I've never actually gone through the whole specials. Bro, I've only heard clips. Bro, he was... I think Schultz referenced it the other day uh, when he was telling his Eddie Murphy story. Oh, from but, the movie? Because I didn't know Schultz... Um, well, a lot of us were, but I didn't know Eddie Murphy was so, so high on the list for him. It's like, yo, this is this is what I want to do. From the very first Chingo chat, um, there's like a highlight on the What Did He Said page. It's from the first Chingo chat, which I think was in December or January of this year. Um, that was kind of the thing, exactly what Schultz was saying, you know, Eddie Murphy was like, I looked up to him and that's what got me into comedy. But anyway, go on. Yeah. So some of the jokes he was doing was like, what if, uh, Ralph Cramden of, uh, the Honeymooners was gay? And it's like, what if Mr. T was gay? He does this whole act out like, oh yeah. He's like, uh, he does all these voices and, and like some crazy act outs and he's saying some wild stuff that in 2021, woo boy. This gonna be like Eddie done misgendered somebody. That's the shit I hate, man. Like that's what com- that's why comedians were like the coolest people on earth because they could say anything they wanted. At- Obviously, as long as they made it funny or thought provoking or whatever, but it's like nothing was off limits for them. And now the '80s were a different time, bro. That's back when America was still the motherfucking bald head eagle. Like it was the '80s. The '80s, everybody was like patriotic. Well, so even even after nine eleven, people really came together, and it's like. They hopped on TV like, go get your flag. Yeah. You better fly that flag, man. We under attack. We didn't know it was like, you know, some inside crazy shit going on. Remember, I, I think there's this funny story that goes around about Joey Diaz after, uh, was it Casey Anthony that drowned her kids? <sighs> okay, what happened? Was it? Do you remember? Do you know uh, yeah, Joey's story, like this, uh, this Joey Diaz story where he, that the very next day he goes out at the comedy store in the OR and he's like, he makes a joke. He starts a, a joke about her and the kids or whatever. And he's like... You know Joey Diaz. This is also like 10 plus years ago, 15 years ago maybe. Where he's like, uh, <laughs> those kids will not be missed. I heard they were bad kids. They sat this close to the TV. They never put their blocks up. They won't be missed, you know? And he made a crazy joke like that. But it was so funny the way that he put it yeah, together. Like He could pull it off. What's off limits if that's the case, you know? Yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> I'm sure some of these alt comedians are like, try to be edgy just for the sake of being edgy. Yeah. But... Uh, but in the grand scheme of things, man, it's like, for example, have we talked about, perfect segue, have we talked about Tim Dillon and Michael Shea in the SNL thing? Barely. I mean, not barely. We did kind of talk about it, but n- we, n- on that was on RPT, right? Okay. So now we could, you know, get deeper into okay, it. Okay, yeah. On let's go chat. in. Let's go in. Let's go in. All right. So I know other podcasts have covered this, but hey, we ain't other podcasts, That's baby. Right. We got our own sauce before I believe it. So uh, I guess the way it all began is... SNL dropped a skit where it was a uh, Big Bird, I forget the guy's name, some comedian, I don't know who the fuck. And then you had tall ass, goofy ass Pete Davidson as Joe Rogan. Tall, skinny Pete Davidson, not a little muscle suit on under the shirt, not fake tattoo, nothing. Just walks up looking like Uncle Fester chewing on uh, ivermectins, right? So it was like Sesame on Ted Cruz Street or something. And the writing, uh, Tim Dillon made a comment. I guess it was a tweet where he was like, SNL been funny for decades. You know, don't get it twisted. SNL will, used to be pretty fucking funny as of recently. He's like, but this shit is, what the fuck is this? He's like, it's more propaganda than everything. And he's like, I'm not just saying it because I'm Rogan's friend. And But he's like, y'all are washed. Y'all are corny. Y'all are lame. Yeah. 
And then Michael Shea is the what, what, head writer, co-head yeah. writer. He's been the man over there for about eight years. And then he threw a jab on his Instagram stories because he's not allowed to be on Twitter when you work for NBC. <laughs> not allowed. Yeah, you ain't allowed. You ain't an independent free man, bro, like Tim Dillon. So somebody, I guess, hit up Shea. And they were like, yeah, but Tim Dillon makes 190 k a month yeah. off Patreon. And he was like, don't get fresh, Tim. We all know who Tim really is. He's a humble, sweet guy, but he ain't make it in stand-up. And he over there trying to be a media personality. And it's like, you mean a podcast, motherfucker? That's what you mean? Media person? Says the guy on an NBC TV show? It's like, wait, you mad? Because he pointed out the obvious that that y'all are forcing these narratives. It's like, it's. he said uh, Tim Dillon had a good critique. He said it's more talking points than jokes. Yeah. He's like, there's a hundred ways y'all could have made this funny. Also, the attack of it, like he's a he's a online media personality. That 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 jab, you know, even though it was a jab, it didn't really seem like something that really makes a lot of sense in 2021. Like, who's not trying to be if they're already on if they're online, some sort of personality? And it just so happens that it's if it's social media. I mean. Well, we've talked about it. It might not translate to the stage, but you're still a media personality. It really doesn't matter who you are. If The View was a sketch show, Boof. it'd be the SNL, basically. It is. It's the SNL of morning daytime TV. The View is the SNL of morning daytime TV. And we're going to play that clip on RPT next. <sighs> That's ridiculous. Okay. Now, before I get off track and my blood pressure goes up, because we're recording RPT after this, um, it, it's almost like a. it just... To people that are paying attention to stuff, it almost seems like a desperate effort of corporate media to be like, okay, guys, it's like a Hail Mary pass of like, okay, one last try. Ivermectin is bad, and Joe Rogan is a crazy Trump tard, QAnon, white supremacist, white boy, racist, uh, far right, something. Uh, fuck Ted Cruz, and Big Bird is a doctor, and he, and they fucking lob in the ball. Yeah. And it's like, fucking fumble. It shit wasn't funny. It's the only reason people are talking about it and like it's somewhat viral is because we having to chime in and clown the shit. But I think Schultz made a good point. He said, uh, Michael Shea got a special dropping. And how convenient is it that like the day before your shit coming out, you throwing a little jab back at Tim Dillon. Yeah, but that kind of also makes a case, right? That like these people know that they're not gonna get the hits from their T V show or their, you know, SNL spot or their writer gig or whatever. So they're going after these media personalities who they try to take a negative jab at to try to get some, you know, drum up some buzz. Like I, I've never honestly I've I've seen him and I've heard his name maybe once in the last ten years. But to say somebody that I listen to on a regular basis, which I listen to hours and hours a week of podcast and YouTube videos and shit. No one's ever mentioned Michael Chase's voice or, or name. Well, the game has changed. The game has shifted to where, like, um, basically it used to be, and this is my, from my perspective because other people, their goal might still be like, nah, uh, NBC, TV, SNL, that's still the goal. That's yeah, still how the did end. that work out for Shane Gillis? Uh, how's it working out for Michael Shea? I mean, I guess it's good for him. Yeah. According to Tim Dillon, he said he had drunk the can't read. <laughs> he can't read. That's fucked up, bro. <laughs> That's so funny. That's what I'm talking about. That's hilarious. Yeah. So the game used to be, you gotta get a, uh, you gotta get on SNL, man. Lauren Michaels and NBC, and you gotta audition, and that's your big break, and that's gonna catapult you. And it could, it could still. However. Yeah, but do you want to go where it's going to catapult you? No, I'd much rather be in Tim Dillon's shoes. Hell yeah. I'd much rather be like, bro, I get, I hop on his mic, I upload these motherfucking podcasts. We got Buku listeners. They all want to go see my theater shows. I damn near don't want to go to those because I'm making so much money on motherfucking subscriptions. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, Tim Dillon is like, that's the new wave. And like, the way Schultz is doing it. You're free. You're independent. You're, you're qu the quality, it's like you even got more respect out here. Yeah. Because the quality of your work, like your bars, like your shit talking skills, your stand up, your jokes, um, you know, when that is a more of a priority, instead of like, damn, bro, y'all got to crank out lame skits week after week. That's what y'all do. Yeah, man, it's hard too, dog. And it's like you're under the shadow of um, you're just part of a bigger old school, complicated type of program where it's like. Man, you know how many listeners these other people get? I wonder how many people, how many people had to actually get into the writer's room to come up with not only that sketch, but 
a lot of the other garbage that we see on a regular basis. And it's a bummer because you want SNL to be good. You don't want a classic show like that that is, is responsible for launching some of yeah. the greatest personalities and entertainers in history to suck. If they fall off, that's a bad look for American culture, man. Like stand-up... It's stand a good up, way to put it. Stand-up comedy was is American made. It's an American board art form. Now, arguably, sketch comedy... I don't know who invented sketches. I don't know if improvisation, where a lot of these cats come from, they come out of Second City and those type of programs. Um, what is it? Groundlings, Second City. Second City's a big one. Upright and, Citizens and, Brigade. Uh, and then the one I went to. UBC. U, U, UCB. UCB. The Up, one I went yeah. to. Upright Citizens Brigade. Yeah. And um, so, in, in other words, y'all making improv look bad. So here's, here's how my thought, thought process is. If this is the final sketch that got written, edited, rehearsed, uh, they had to build a set, they had to get wardrobe, costume, like y'all had to go through a lot to to arrive at that, mm -hmm. to where it's like, eh, it was funnier in rehearsal, or like, it's funnier on paper, or like, if we had more time to build a better set, or whatever. Um, but this particular sketch, it beat out other sketches. How bad were the other ones? Or is it just a priority? Like, hey, man, we got to hurry up and save CNN, Sanjay Gupta. And we got to keep <laughs> saving Big Pharma. We got to keep making Rogan look bad because he got too much motherfucking audience and reach and influence. By the way, did you see him last night? On, so fucking cool, man. In the RV? So cool, him and Tim Dillon and um, uh, Alex, Alex Jones. Who? Alex Jones. Who? Alex Jones. Jones, Jones. Dude, what a cool picture. Like, And then Drew Hernandez was still there Drew because the, the trial was going on yesterday, which we thought was going to end yesterday, but we'll talk about that on RPT because we'll probably get a result in they the had, middle of they that. They had a one Latino limit. Otherwise, I'd have been there. <laughs> They said, man, go ahead, let Drew, man. Drew, Drew just testified in Rittenhouse, bro. Let him make it. That's true, right? And then, yeah, everybody was there. Uh, uh, Ian. Michael Malice was there. Michael Malice was there, too. Um, I didn't really know who Blair White was. She's some content creator from Austin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the smoke show next to uh, Alex Jones, you know, just letting the heavies hang out. Exactly. But it was a cool picture. It was a cool, and, and actually kind of segues into what I wanted to talk about also to go along with SNL and the media and the culture and SNL and all this shit, is that, have you ever thought about, this is, some, this is a thought that I'll have kind of periodically is, when it comes to forms of entertainment, stand up, sketches, movies, you know, writing, all this, you know, uh, uh, single uh, or uh, singer songwriters, whatever, all these different things that happen throughout time. When podcasting came onto the scene, you know, arguably 15 years ago, but really like 10 years ago, when Corolla and Rogan and these people were really blasting off. You, you couldn't think to yourself, I'm going to be a podcaster 20 years ago because it really wasn't a medium or an art form that existed mm -hmm. yet. And then now that it, it's become what it's become over the last decade, it's like, what else? This is the thought I have. Like, what else could become an art form that people right now are, they're kind of like doing it, but it's not really a thing yet or it's not really a medium. You know, is it is it going to be metaverse shit where it's not even in reality anymore? It's, it's in the alternate, you know, I don't know, universe. Or second life. Yeah, Ready Player One. Exactly. Bullshit. Is it in the Matrix? Or is this already, obviously, I think this is the matrix within a matrix. That's just, I've been saying that forever. Mm -hmm. yep. But you, you know what I'm saying? Like, if it's podcasting now, and it will be probably for as long as radio and TV exist. I think this is a staple, just like television is and like radio, terrestrial radio has been. Podcasting is that trying, it's going to complete that triangle. But what else is going to come? Like, what else are the people that are being these, uh, and, and I think of it too, in the sense that the PC culture people and the cancel culture people, they're do, they're talking, they're saying, they're making this shit on these platforms that eventually people are just going to be like, okay, I'm, I've had it. This is yeah. terrible ideas. Where are they going to go? In other words, like as CNN ratings are dropping as like the view, like the whole narrative and thread of like, the NBA is not controlled by China and like yeah. Hollywood isn't financed by China. And it's like our educational system hasn't been compromised. And like the elites have sold us out. It's like this thin, thin narrative of like, trust us. It's all science. And it's like some of this shit don't add up. And anyway, there people are losing distrust in you yeah. know, the Democrats and, and the corporate media to where as podcasting is getting more popular, mm -hmm. it's almost like... Well, Sam Tripoli's take on, on the metaverse and all this was that it's a way to thin the herd in the sense that, the you know, the people are... they're gonna you have, You're going to have the people that live in the metaverse, which is, I guess, from what I took, going to be prioritized over, like, reality or real life. I actually think it's going to be the, the other way around. 
you're going to get all these people that aren't going to have a place in reality reality anymore because the shit that they're saying, the shit that they're pushing, just isn't making sense to the people that want to raise families, want to have land, want to, you know, actually live in the actual physical, uh-huh. you know, world. The rest of them, the betas, all the fucking crazy kooky people will be in the metaverse. They're not going to be, they're going to be plugged into their computers. I think they're going to make the metaverse so cool that it's just, it's, it's almost like the internet. Or social media, where like in theory, like let's say we go back to the fifties or the sixties, he'd be like, "Rob, you really want to be sitting in front of a machine, talking to a screen, you know what I mean? Yeah. Holding a device and posting what you have for lunch." And it's like, hell no! And then they make it, and it's like, man, it ain't just pictures of your lunch, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's pictures of some heavy. Or stuff. like you could like you know promote your tour, or you can go live. And, <clears throat> What's funny know, though leave is a that comment on your your, your Tia in Mexico's page and shit. The fifties, what you've said, like what you just used as an example to now, was literally pitching the access to information versus not having the access to information. Whereas now the internet versus the metaverse is like what convenience. Everything you always hear is like, Oh, you'll be more united, you know, with people across the globe or something. You'll be more, it's just convenience, convenience, like easier, easier. I don't, what what else do we really need to be easier? That's not in the physical world. If you have the information already on your phone or computer. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it could be more convenient in some ways, but just in terms of, um, where technology is heading, I want to talk about Kanye and Drake after this. Okay. So I made a note. Uh, like, if this is a this is a heavy subject, man, because it gets into the subject of transhumanism mm-hmm. and the singularity, and is there a God? Are we about to all just plug in and try to like merge with technology because the next industrial revolution is coming, like on some Andrew Yang? ubi type shit where it's like artificial intelligence about to take your job you know automation is coming uh, it's going to be a whole fraction of society that is going to need some ubi they're going to have to learn some new shit and um so it's almost just like a sign of the times like the technology is going in a direction where those that like ray kurzweil those that believe in singularity and all that type of shit it's almost like like on some Elon Musk, uh, what's that thing he, where he plugs into your head? Cyber, not Cyberlink. Is that what it's called? No. Uh, Neuralink. Neuralink. Okay. That shit. All right. So this Neuralink stuff, right? And this metaverse stuff and this like avatar, ready player one, singularity, transhumanism stuff. It's almost like the battle for our species is what's at stake. Meaning you got like... um this whole they had the dude on 60 minutes i forget his name i think it's the guy that wrote sapiens but he basically is saying artificial intelligence is so powerful and so important that we're going to need a global governing body to regulate and centralize all of this so if they start you know i'm about to get real rpt if they collapse the u.s dollar they push us into some kind of central crypto right I don't know. It might be the center of it all. It might be based somewhere in, I don't know, Asia, in a city of rhymes with like Beijing or something like that. But they push us all into crypto. You already got the Vax app. Boom. That's going to have your social credit score linked in. Boom. Now you got your digital Bitcoin or whatever the fuck, crypto blockchain on your thing. Boom. So now your money's tied in. You know what I'm saying? So like, basically, bro, ain't going to be no more humans. Uh, soon we're gonna evolve and we're gonna merge into some shit and that you might be right and i'm not even against it because forever the way that i think that this is a matrix and that this is a simulation that does that doesn't also doesn't mean that a god can't exist within a simulation like you know we'll take that for whatever it is it's a, it's a crazy we're just waxing poetic here about this stuff but you know some of it makes a little bit of sense if you think about it with what we're seeing with the metaverse microsoft has their version of you know their because the metaverse is what the metaverse is just Another, it, it's like an ethereal place, right? It's it's a it's a technological kind of atmosphere, a universe, second life, a second kind of life. Yeah. But it's 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 not like it's owned by Facebook just because they changed their name to Meta. You know, it, it's just they'll have their Seven Eleven of the metaverse in the metaverse. Microsoft is going to have their Seven Eleven of the metaverse in the metaverse, and then everyone else will too. One is Xbox, one is uh, PS Five. Exactly, exactly. And then within those, you'll have some things that are you know uh, platform exclusives, like you'll only find it on you know at the at the corner store with Microsoft and the corner with you know whatever the fuck. So it's like who knows? But you and I, and people that are listening to the podcast, are in a demographic I think where. You grew up where there wasn't any cell phones. 
<laughs> I damn bro why you gotta put me out like that <laughs> I didn't really yo old bitch ass <laughs> yo old ass hitting up hitting 50 soon just kidding yeah that, I, I don't know that, but I'm, I, I'm like in the middle of that, where cell phones, when I was really developing, were iPhones had come out, right? Like I was in high, I was in high school when iPhones came out. Uh-huh. It's, it's, so wow. we're in the middle of that transition there. But our kids now will never know no internet, no phones, no screens, no metaverse, no VR. When I was in high school, Wu-Tang was coming out. <laughs> Biggie and Tupac were coming out. Dude, that's crazy to like, think. Like, you over here talking about the iPhone was coming out. Yeah, I mean, Steve Jobs was changing the world and shit with the iPad and iPhone and iPod and all that. It's technologically, right? Culturally, that's a different thing, too. But our kids won't quite have the balance of understanding what reality was prior to tech and then how to merge with it. So I think we have an advantage. This is just the shit I think about sometimes. I think we have the advantage because we know how to live and, and mingle and pivot within those two worlds. Our kids are going to have a really hard time, I think, in reality, unless the parents, you know, the household structure, instill some of those values and some of that work ethic in them, because they have no reason to just be like, I'm going to be really good with my, I'm going to be really handy, in other words. I'm going to be really conscious about food and animals and wildlife and all these things that we know are important, you know. I grew up in that environment, but you didn't. But we still find a way to understand the importance of both and how to maybe do some of both. Our kids, I don't know if they, that they will. So you're saying the kids are going to be like disconnected with uh, like, uh, I mean, fuck, I don't know how to hunt, but like hunting, is that what you, farming, is that what you mean? Or being self-reliant? Just the physical world in general because of things like the metaverse. Oh, shit. The you know, physical. they don't want to drive. They don't want driver's licenses. You know, m- most things are remote now, like schooling or, or uh, even a lot of jobs. It's all Zoom and remote. The metaverse will be here by the time they're our age. So they're going to have a different just distinction of what's reality and what's not. You know what I told my 13-year-old yesterday? Um, I forgot what. Oh, this is what it was. Bing, bing, bing. All right. So yesterday was movie night. We, I put in, I, I put on uh, Home Alone. Put in? You got yeah, it's, I was thinking like a VCR. Oh. No, 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 no. Uh, I put on uh, Home Alone. And uh, man, I was just enjoying it. I was just like, you got to watch that every year. It's bro, a, it's, yes. a, it's, a, it's a must. It's a it staple. It is, bro. It is. So, oh my god! First of all, I, man, I forget Buddy's name. He's like my favorite fucking director too. Uh, John Hughes is that his name? The guy that made Home Alone. Yeah, he made a lot of those '80s movies. Dude, A Christmas Story. A Christmas Story. Oh, okay, that You'll was somebody else. Yeah, I know, yeah, but those yeah. that's one of those classics. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I, but believe it or not, I ain't really just. <sighs> it was something that was always playing on TV, but I never really. Just, I just I saw it in in scenes all out of order please watch it please watch it this year okay for sure so home alone i'm trying to school my kids i'm trying to tell my 13 year old all right joe pesci as a bad guy i was like we enjoy seeing him get hurt like when he's (laughs) like this motherfucker put booby traps all around his house right and uh so i'm trying to explain to her i was like this dude was in gangster movies i was like you don't understand like the fact that they chose him and I was pointing out like all the foreshadowing where he pulled out firecrackers out of his uh his big brother's uh the trunk in his room. He's like, I'm gonna save these for later and little stuff like that. But I was pointing out how I was like, Oh look, in the airport when they're like racing to catch the flight to Paris, I'm like, There was no TSA back then. There was no TSA. The whole family could run to the gate. It wasn't Run to get your ticket, run to check in your bag, run to over here. Now you got to run and get to the metal detector, run, take your shoes off, run and do this. Now they giving you the cavity search, like run, get to this, run, run, run. Now you're going through the motherfucking, the radiation machine where it's like, put your hands up. And then you're going through clear. Now China got all your biometrics and shit. You done paid them. You so, paid them to take your biometrics. Basically, yes. Just for convenience. Yeah. Yes, I did that. Uh, China got all my shit now. They got, what would you want to use? Your thumbs or, or, the, or the eye? Fuck it. Scan everything. They're going to have their Lomain Kingpin. They're going to have their Egg Roll Kingpin. Todo. All the, the Mala Kingpin clones. Todo way. I'm finna, they finna, <laughs> it's going to be a whole generation and shit. My sons and shit like the rap game. So I was pointing out how in the, in the airport, it was a hella um, pay phones. It's like, oh, they, they, right. they, it's all hella pay phones and shit. I was like, oh, you don't see those anymore. And I still remember using a pay phone. Yeah, you, you just don't see them anymore. No, 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 yeah. Especially not like that. Mm-mm. You in the old ass airport, you see that. And then uh, I told my daughter, I was like, you're going to be pointing out stuff to these little ones, to your little sisters, because she's 13 years older and 10 years older, right? 
And I was like, you're going to be feeling old because you're going to be pointing out stuff. like, Oh, back in my day before the metaverse, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Before uh, augmented reality and That's VR. That's exactly what I'm saying. You know, you know, we, back when we used to be a superpower and we had rights and freedoms. Well, I wouldn't go that far. And we got sold out. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Back when we got sold out to the CCP and didn't nobody know everything was propaganda. So uh, The View, speaking of propaganda, you had that lady, uh, man, what's her name? Jebediah? Yeah, Je- Jediah, I think. Jed. Je- they call her Jed. Okay. Jedi- Jebediah? I don't know. Jebediah. I forget her name. But uh, she used to be on The View, right? And she bounced and she's on Fox News. Well, she had to zoom in. Mm-hmm. Something about Corona. This is like soon after Kamala's thing where like supposedly some of the girls said oh we caught covid mm. kamala can't be here yeah and then they're like psych fake positive right kamala couldn't be here or whatever so jeb jed whatever she zoomed in jeb, and, jeb and they were like so why you ain't here and you over there unvaxxed and whoop de woo and you don't believe in science you uh, insurrectionist and she's like actually if you look on the cdc website and if you look at this data, you can go on their website. Straight and, facts. And she's like, that's why they had to bring the mask back for y'all. And she's like, and it's proven. You can ask my doctor because, you know, I still talk to my doctor. She's like, I got these antibodies and this immune system and uh, natural immunity. Hit them with the buzzwords. Ping, ping, ping. The left was going crazy. They were in meltdown. Like, oh, my God, data, science. Ah. <laughs> and right away, Joy Behar, she was the first crash dummy to be like, Wait a minute, we can't have you talking all them facts on here. Dude, and then it, in the middle of her her, you know, whatever, her her points, all the all the knowledge she was dropping, Jed's, mm-hmm. you could hear Whoopi in the in the background. Uh, <laughs> she looked like she sounded like she was taking a shit right there on TV. Man, she looked like she needed a little bit more fiber in her life. Bruh. She's looking uh, more and more like uh job of the hood. Bro man straight up. Straight up. Straight up, silent meme majority make the job of the hut. I mean, that's kind of image is mean, but I thought the same thing, of course. And my first thought was like, bro, if we really talking about health on here, y'all over, y'all, <laughs> y'all missing out on the obvious. Whoopie, we posted that on the what they said page, and some of the comment early comments were like, yeah. The beautiful thin uh, TV host versus the need you know scooters to get around. Like, who am I gonna listen to? <sighs> Yeah, man. Yeah, that's that's crazy, bro. Um, and why, then, why did we bring that up? We were talking about... Oh, I said propaganda. Oh, propaganda, yeah. Somehow I said propaganda. I said, speaking of propaganda, yeah. <laughs> The View. So one thing this whole Vax debate and this Rona debate has really kicked us some dust where people really starting to notice like, whoa, 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 whoa. Y'all going, boy, big pharma, y'all going hard on the narratives. They're like, whoa, 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 corporate media. Yeah. Pump your brakes, corporate media, because you're trying to like shame us for wanting a better explanation or better answers. Don't just be like, and we're the news and we said so, because the government said, and these third party and these three letter organizations that, you know, are not compromised at all. (sighs) It's all science. And Jed was telling them, that's why they had to bring the mask back for y'all. I'm not a threat to y'all. Uh, y'all you know what i'm saying like the vax are the ones spread like just saying a bunch of stuff and then sunny boy Oof. sunny hosting way to not let your guests talk at all <laughs> bro you could already tell she's the main crash dummy that she's the one with the earpiece with like cut her off yeah and she's like um yeah how could you Seven hundred thousand americans died and trump and whoop de woo and y'all over there on fox news misinformation she hit him with the buzzwords misinformation bitch you belong in the gulag and uh how dare you go against big brother you know what i'm saying like like uh she went straight commie she went straight communist like ah uh, uh talked over her uh fuck science bitch it's whatever we say and they hit her with a, uh, you've been spending way too much time at Fox News. What does that have to uh, do? We got to go. Misinformation. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Misinformation. Mm-mm, mm-mm. We got to go. go. <laughs> Whoopi thought she was real clever. And she was like, uh, Jet, Jet, this might sound familiar to you. We got to go to break. Whoopi, you need to take a, a break. Mm. Mm. Whoopi. Mm. It's just terrible, man. <laughs> it's just so <laughs> bad. It's so bad. Hey, but they're exposing themselves, bro. Like... People be like, man, Chingo, he like to talk about politics. No, man. We just like to call out the bullshit. We like talking about common sense and freedom. And I know this is Chingo Chats, but The View is a TV show. 
They the ones getting making political. Arguably, they have or they're supposed to have a really huge cultural impact on the population. They go, they right? go to thumbnail, right? Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Actually, do it right there. Boom. Point point up in a direction in in that other direction. Oh. There you go. <laughs> got it. There's your thumbnail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bet we got a thumbnail. Um, make sure y'all subscribe to CBTV. <laughs> in case we get deplatformed, please join the newsletter chingobling.com. Um, and we're gonna we're, we'll talk about it off air, but we want to beef up chingobling.com to where like when I go on the war room pandemic or when they have me on these other shows. You know what I'm saying? When Rogan, yeah. when Rogan hit me up like, say, young thug. Young player, young pimp, I see you out here, man. We on your turf, bro. This Texas, baby. We done already had Jake Prince up here. We got to have you. We done had Snoop. We got to have you. We done had Lex Friedman. Pfft, it's only natural we have you next. You damn near black belt, you damn self. So before we get deplatformed, um, we want to fortify chingobling.com so that I can shout that out when I go on War Room Pandemic or I'm on motherfucking. When Tim Dillon is like, say, player, where you at? Pull up. Get we what barbecues popping out here? Yeah, right. And uh, that way I could be like chingobling.com. and then from there people could catapult. Like, all right, now I know where his Instagram is, his Twitter. Like, because back in the day they used to have all these other platforms where you can just drop in. You know, you used to be able to just drop in. Like, oh, I'm gonna have a side column or whatever. Um, I don't know, but it'd be cool to have everything centralized for people so they just know. Where to find you? Because a lot of times people be like, man, what happened to your old YouTube? And uh, uh, I didn't even know you had a whatever, like a TikTok, which I don't anymore. You never you never made another one after they nah, take it away? Not yet. No, only because this is why. In order to maintain it and to grow it, mm-hmm. for one, you're, you're always against their community guidelines and algorithm. You're always jumping through hoops. You're always having to watch what you say and this and that. So... Right now, I'm like, let me not make that commitment of... Um, I'm not of, trying to distract uh, you. Yeah, yeah, let me not make that commitment of like, all right, guys, I'm on TikTok. It's like, bro, if you're not going to consistently use it, like, I want to wait till I, till I have all my other systems in place. Mm-hmm. So it's not taken away from you. It, it, yeah. All that shit takes up time. Yeah. And then you get overwhelmed. It's like, man, call Joseph, man. We've been, we've been slacking on a TikTok. Now you're spending all afternoon trying to crank out a couple little TikToks and shit. You know, meanwhile, you're like, man, let me take my kids to the park. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm 42. I got a three-month-old. I can't be dancing around, jumping around on TikTok. Look, chingobling.com, you got the tour, which you have the 2022 tour tickets here. Merch, We I have the join the Patreon here. So this is something we can make maybe a little more interactive or to be seen even, you know, greater. Uh, the podcast, RSS feed, the YouTube, you know, booking. I need to start having separate inventory for a website and separate inventory for tour. Yeah. Instead of double dipping. Merch you're talking about? Yes. Yeah, we talked about that. You were, you and Mighty Saw were like, nah, I like Squarespace. We're going to keep everything on the current. No, no, we're not talking about Squarespace. Oh. I'm talking about separate inventory. Like, like don't, like, say, okay, I'll leave, okay, let's just say, pretend I'm leaving the Salt Lake tomorrow. I'm going to dip into the merch, oh. which is also part of the inventory. Oh, gotcha. That's for the website. Gotcha, gotcha. And then so the only reason I'm on Squarespace is because you set up Squarespace. I set that up like five years ago. And then, oh. and then like, a year and a half ago, I was like, hey, we should look at it at, at uh, Shopify because of X, Y, Z. But then you're like, it's extra well, passwords. It's extra, well, learn because if I, have, if I have somebody helping me, you're now, right. now I got to be like, hey, bro, I know you learned this. Well, then I got to train that. Then just say, hey, yeah. let's get Rob. Get Rob. I'll train you how to use it. We're going into Shopify next because tour is over. Now I can have clear set inventory. Yeah. And I could be like, Rob, this is what we're making. It's all the freedom stuff. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm saying. Not all this, uh, like some, some cat... Uh, used to design some stuff for me. He he walked up to me at the uh, we were at the food court at the mall, and I couldn't recognize him. He had his mask on. He looked familiar. I'm like, oh, are you my cousin? Like, are you re- are we related? He's like, hey man, I used to design shirts for you. I was like, which ones? He's like, man, it was one that said wet back swag and this and that. <laughs> I'm like, oh Lord have mercy. I'm like, that must have been a long time ago, bro. He's like, I made another one that was like, you know, puro pinche something something, and I'm just like, yeah, that that must have been a long time ago. I'm a, I'm gonna hop on a call with Silent Meme Jordy tomorrow. We're gonna chat about you know he really likes being able to be a part of the the graphic team and, and making those posters for you. So see how much time he has for what he can do in 2022 because that's what he does full time. He's a he's a professional graphic designer, and uh, it'll be fun. It'll, That'd be great. Yeah, I'm gonna pick his brain, and then you know obviously you and Mighty Soul or you and Mighty Soul will have creative meetings throughout the next two two three months, and we'll just try to get all the systems as you would say 
in place, all the systems and processes in place so that 2022 is as smooth as possible. And the further that we're removed from what tw- whatever 2020 was, <laughs> like whatever shit show and, that was. And 2021, boy. Yeah. But, I mean, nothing compares to the misery of 2022, honestly, when it comes to just how life was shooken up. Everything felt, even 2021 felt discombobulated. 100%. Because here we are ending the tour. And I feel like I'm just now trying to get back on track to get, uh, to get in shape. Yeah. It's like, bro, you were supposed to be in shape at the top of the tour. It's like, I know, man, but, you know, we had a baby and this and that. And you, you know what I mean? And it's you, not like you don't have the excuses. I mean, I'm not, not, not saying that excuses are, you know, you're not supposed to have them. You are, and you have valid ones. I think the main excuse is like you just said, how do we simplify everything? All right. So that you said... So that it's the furthest thing from the discombobulated. Yeah. Okay. So the way you get to the most simplest streamlined way is zero traveling. Obviously, you can't do zero traveling because there's still, you know, a lot of places you're able to go. You know, people still want to see you in Nashville. They still want you to come to Raleigh, North Carolina, Naples, Florida. You know what I mean? It's almost like you having to look at the map and be like... Are we going to hit Milwaukee this year? It's a new spot. You know what I mean? Or like, we want to go back to Vegas. Mm-hmm. It's like, can we get a weekend though? Because flying in just for one show on a Thursday is like inefficient. Um, and so, those are a lot of things we'll talk, we'll talk about. Yeah. So we appreciate everybody that comes out to the show. And I know it's a pain for y'all too. And it's like, bro, we came to see you in Brea. Why got to be a Thursday night or oh, something right. like that? Hey, we feel you too. And we appreciate y'all for coming because that shows the clubs. Because this is all business. Mm-hmm. That shows the clubs like, all right, if he fucking sold it out on a Thursday, if he would have sold it out sooner, we could have added a show on a Thursday. And then we would have said, hey, man, come back and do Friday, Saturday. Yeah. And that's why the newsletter, again, we didn't say it at the top, but the newsletter on, on shingobling.com is so important. Even if you're not a part of the Patreon, but you're listening to the free episodes of the podcast and you're on the newsletter on the website, you get to stay in the loop. You know, People that really care about their content creators and they want to see them live if they're live performers... They want to do that. You want to voluntarily do that. And hell, you know, put your friend and your sister and everybody else on a newsletter too. put their emails in there or send them the link so that they can get on the list because it's hard. It's getting harder and harder for the to, to, the play to play. The pay to play model has been a thing for a while now uh, because organic reach is almost impossible on social media. Unless you are constantly if you you literally got to be cranking out a piece of content every 30 minutes <laughs> in order for the percentage of the people that are going to see it to follow you to be over 25 percent just to have over a quarter of the people that follow you to see it you got to be cranking out that much we do that right now on the what did he said page which is why we're seeing that spike in growth but to do that if you have multiple pages or if you have a main account or whatever it's really hard without a big team and be and uh, while also being careful to adhere to their ever-changing policies like oh it's got to be more original or or that's an induendo or or they had a picture of like some kid there's a kid in the background or whatever um, and then while you're doing that too, you still got to do the thing that people are following you for, right? You're a comedian, you're a podcaster, whatever it is. You still have to make the main content around all of the little snippets that have to go on social media. Yeah. So. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, so the name of the game is get out the game. You know what I'm saying? And, the name and, of the game is efficiency. Yeah. And and and, and uh, play. How 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 should I say this? Play the game. Don't let the game play you. There you go. In other words. Don't be out here young and stupid trying to chase stardom and chase a record deal and chase this and chase that when really the play is, okay, if you're going to make some money off of rapping or say you're an athlete or something, you know what I mean? These non-traditional things that involve luck and, <laughs> and you know, and, and they have a very finite, finite, you know, you can't rap forever and, you know, so on. Like if you have a hit, can you have another hit type of thing? That's why the key is make your money off that sure but it's like tiger woods okay he had buick backing him up mm-hmm. michael jordan had nike it wasn't just a check from the bulls and the nba it's like nah man my nike money really is where i get to really play so it's like reinvest um talking about that money and and investing it wisely and then earlier we we're talking about the metaverse and the internet so there's this i'm just starting to read about this but there's this uh group of people right now there's I'm, t- I'm sure there's tons of them but you know we're talking about blockchain and bitcoin there's a group of people called the uh it's like the constitutional doa or dao or something where it's like a decentralized something something and what they're trying to do right now is there's one more first edition this is kind of rpts but it's really cultural and, and tech so there's one more first edition constitution original constitution that's up for sale 
um, there's, I, I don't know how many there are total, but there's one more that's going back up to auction for, for sale. When it sold, I forgot how many years ago it sold. It sold for like, I think it was like maybe 10 or 20 years ago. It sold for like 150 or 200 grand or something like that. Now it's going to some charitable auction where it's looking to get like 20 million, not 20, not 200,000, right? <laughs> so this group of people, they've taken it upon themselves to create a community on the blockchain where let's say you and I want a piece of this original first like an NFT, not an NFT. They're actually going to buy the actual document, but they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're pulling their money together mm. on the blockchain to keep it, to keep it decentralized from, uh, you know, fees and big brokers and all these. It's just the people want this thing. They want to say they have a stake in it. They're going to pull their money together and they're going to do it in a decentralized kind of way. I cut out the middleman, cut out all the middlemen. And uh, I thought that was fascinating. So that's kind of like, and the, to tie it in together, it's kind of like what content creators are doing with Patreon. They're doing it with Substack. Substack, as a matter of fact, yesterday hit their one millionth paid subscriber. So Substack is the uh, paid email newsletters. So people like Chris Irons write about finance on there. You know, Whitney Webb, all these people, uh, Barry Weiss, they do all of their the writings on Substack so that like Patreon, the people that want to read their articles because they can't be at the New York Times anymore, they can't be at The Intercept or whatever, they pay for it directly. Mm -hmm. So these communities are coming together and just paying for the things that they want. And that's where Patreon for podcasters and, and, you know, entertainers kind of comes in as well. So Mm -hmm. it's just interesting because the blockchain was like a total, it's just a total another different avenue to pull your money together and and get things done or create things or... The game is changing. Yeah. Um, Last night, my homeboy, uh, that boy T... He was schooling me about um so there's a there's a rapper named Money Man that it'd be great we could have him on the show or it'd be cool if he jumps on Cash Daddies with uh, Sam Tripoli and them because s- supposedly he's the first artist ever who got paid his million dollar advance in crypto in like Bitcoin hmm. and supposedly they uh they were on a private jet and um the dude from Empire uh, Ghazi he like sent it via Cash App or some shit he like went to the Cash App. Instead of dollars, he put crypto, and then he put a million, then he sent it to Homeboy, and he's on live, and he like, oh, shit, thanks, bro. You just sent me my uh, million-dollar advance in crypto, which mm. which is kind of game-breaking and revolutionary because arguably is that crypto goes up, right? It's almost like, yeah, you got a million dollars in advance, but mine was in crypto, so really it's like I'm at 2.5 million. Like I'm at 3 million as of this morning type of thing. But also in that same token... Something I was reading about this week is that, you know, lawmakers are, are the, the gov, you know, the feds, they're going to want their cut of this money, right? They're going to tax it. So I know we keep talking about uh, decentralized, you know, money and all that kind of stuff away from fiat currency and blah, blah, blah. The they are starting to crack down on X amount of transactions with cryptocurrency somehow where it's triggering more audits for these people that are purchasing things and investing in things through cryptocurrency. So... I'll just leave that there, and, and maybe we'll both read more about that in the future. But it, it's gonna it's gonna leave those people not to, not to say you're doing shit shady shit anyway. But they bought yeah the government had, about to have a nose all up in your shit. Yeah, the way that you saw these conversations about the six hundred dollars in your bank account, and they're gonna flag you. And, you know how are these things happening. This is gonna be even twice as as more for people yeah, they, doing crypto. Yeah, they about to edit. I mean, edit audit. <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of people getting audited. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You you saying something spicy? Yeah, you speaking unfavorably of the regime, but especially if you're trying to skirt around the dollar, you know, you're trying to skirt around the actual currency system. They're saying too that all that capital gains tax stuff is to basically go after the crypto, because as it goes up, you're gaining off of your investment, and they're like, we need to tax. Okay, I can see that. Tax every dip Mm -hmm. or whatever. So um, anyway, the point is, dude's name is Money Man. His album is called Blockchain. (laughs) He got real shit, real shit, and um. And it's cool. It's really, really, really cool, man. It's really, really cool because you already have so many rappers hustling backwards. Not only are they hustling backwards, but they it's the blind leading the blind. Ooh. So so you holding up paper fiat money and mm. shit like, yeah. It's like, bitch, you holding up inflation. Mm. You holding up paper that's losing its power, right? And then, and then you got this guy that when he goes on live, now he's giving you game. Now, if he has a fan tap in, like add them to the live Instagram, like they're little young Hispanic kids from the Bay and shit talking about, hey, you heard AMC movies went up and, you know, I I bought in at $17 and and they going back and forth about crypto. And it's like, okay, that's what I was trying to do with tamales and masa, meaning stop all rapping about goofy shit that's going to land you in prison. 
or get you killed, right? And just boil it back down to the hustle. And if you can find a legal, <laughs> delicious way, it's like, let's promote that. Um, but anyway, we'll see what his album does. We'll see it, what how his story continues. Because he, he has billboards in Houston even. And um, it'd be cool to, if he would be like, yo, my, my million dollar advance has grown more than anybody else's money. Because when you have paper money, like for example, mm. if you put a million dollars in a bank, what is the motherfucking chase? Like, they're holding on to your million and they're doing shit with it. And the minute you want to, like, how is your shit growing? What it, what's the interest rate? I mean, you would never want to just park it in a bank account, though. You know, you would people would say like, put it at least in an index fund or something. But yeah, other stores of value. Yeah, you know, precious metals. You know what I'm saying? People look. That's why crypto's blowing up. It's like Joseph Raheem Breezy over here. <laughs> I mean, they cru- they crushing the U.S. dollar. So people right now are thinking like, okay, guns, ammo, uh, real estate, land. Like, where do I park this cash? Dude, I hadn't seen one of my really good friends uh, since my birthday, since before my birthday. So I saw him this past weekend for the first time since before then. And he had a couple gifts for me. Bought me a, he got me a bottle of a really good bourbon that we had a long time ago. And then he got me a two-ounce silver coin. He's like, I don't know if you... Because he listens to RPT, too. He's like, I don't know if you have any, he started investing in, in bullion, you know, in precious metals or whatever, but here's a coin and it's in a little plastic. It's like a, it's like a silver dollar. It looks, it's like a size of a silver dollar and it's two ounces of like silver. So then I was like, you know what? I keep saying that I'm going to do that. And Chris Iron, since we're going to have him on soon, as soon as we can figure out a schedule, he knows all about that. He has a great uh, provider for his podcast that helps with uh, buying gold and silver and shit. So that's another thing to park your money. You know, that shit's going up. You know, that shit has always been as valuable as it is now. And, and, and then more as time goes on. So yeah. Park it in that, you know, park it in anything. Diversify. Other than, yeah. But also don't just park it somewhere where you're getting point point zero 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 one two five of a fucking percent. I, you know what, Rob, as we're as we're educating ourselves on all this stuff and as we're wanting to podcast more because I want to travel less. You know what I mean? And when I do travel, I want to make it more efficient mm-hmm. so that if I am going to do a Thursday and fucking, you know, wherever. It's a theater. It, yeah. It's going to be a theater. And then people might be like, we're here because of your money show. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We listen to the money show um, or whatever we come up with, right? But um, but yeah, uh, more to come on that. We're going to look into that. I didn't know you could just buy the metals in coins. Not not. I thought you had to go with a bar. Oh, no, you can buy them in coins, yeah. Here, I'm going to pull something up uh, as we're talking about that. Do, do you have any any like precious metals or have you ever looked into anything in particular or I, had anybody school you on precious metals? Not Not deep like that, no. We only... When we had Chris Irons, we I was like, where do you keep your gold bar? He's like, motherfucker, you're asking a lot of questions. <laughs> I'm like, well, I'm curious. Do you just have a gold bar under your bed or some shit? I'm sure some people do, right? And it's like, how heavy is it? And then how much does it cost? How much is a gold bar? Actually, I think this might be the one that Chris Irons uses. JM Bullion, I believe, is the sponsor of his podcast. So uh, I've seen a... Um, a th- I don't know how many how much it was worth, but it was like a thin little dollar bill made out of gold. A thin dollar bill? Yeah. So I gotta take a leak. Oh what? All right, go ahead. All right, everybody. Well, we're gonna pause it here. All right, and we are back. Feel better? Released? Yeah, man. The bladder was uh gotta drain the main vein. You know what I'm talking about? So we got Jam Bullion here. Um, this is the price of this is live. What is it? Live metal spot prices. So this is I got one of these coins right here. Let uh-huh. me put the picture in picture for the people so they can see. So I have one. I think it's this one. Whoa. There you go. The newsletter, man. Mm-hmm. I'll sign up for Jam Bullion if this is Chris Irons. Uh, Look at that sponsor. little bar right there. One ounce. What? Okay. That's only an ounce right there. One ounce silver buffalo silver bar for 20, as low as $28. Okay. Huh. How many of them you got to buy for it to be $28? Well, I think one of these is one ounce. One ounce it's, it's 28 bucks. Oh, so if somebody okay. gave you one of these... You could, you could, you know, you'd have $30 roughly worth of silver, one ounce. So I have two ounce. I don't know what are the coins. So they're roughly, I guess, depending on, I guess, you, like anything else, we got to research, right? Like he gave you a two ounce. A two ounce, a two uh, ounce silver. Um, these are all one ounce. One ounce. And the benefit, um, the benefit of uh, diversifying and having uh, precious metals as a store of value. I, I think Chris Irons said it on the show with us last time when he said, Anywhere in the world, chances are they're going to have some type of market, right? Oh, yeah. In other words... There's always an exchange for metals. In other words, if shit, shit goes sideways, <laughs> it should turn into Mad Max and, you know, 
the gas is fifty dollars a gallon. You know what I'm saying? We're in we're at war and all types of goofy shit. And yeah. you got to go be an immigrant somewhere. Take you take you your little silver and your gold, and see what you could buy. What is it? What's that number right there? I can't see it from this uh, angle. Is uh, it is it seventy eight? Oh, twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay. Mm-hmm. So this is a price that's over the last six months. Kind of went on a little dip, and now it's going back up. But it's always within that 20, right? What's gold at? Just out of curiosity. Damn. Oh, shit. Yeah, way more. What is this per ounce? Eight. What is that? $1,800? Is it per ounce? Is I don't this, know. It doesn't say on this graph. Sepa. Wow. Sepa. Well. Sepa la madre. Um, Precious metals, everybody. <laughs> Yeah, man. It's just, just another avenue. <sighs> Bro, it, it, it's like the game is changing, man, because for the longest, people trying to stack that paper, get yeah. that money. Oh, that's and what it, we're talking about. Yeah, and now it's like, oh, you got paper money? <laughs> and I was like, you're not, uh, you're not diversified. You're not well-invested. You know, you said a, a funny phrase. People, like you're talking about rappers in particular, they're, what do you say? They're headed backwards or they're they, running backwards? Uh, hustling backwards. Hustling backwards. Yeah, hustling backwards. And wouldn't you say that they're also maybe doing that arguably within the, the craft itself? Like if they're not, because we, we know people and other things that aren't very uh, savvy with their social, right? Or savvy with their public presence other than just like maybe still trying to hit up like a, a flea market, let's just say, or, or whatever, like locally passing out CDs if they're still doing that. I'm sure there's a lot of people that are still trying to make it out of that. <laughs> when you shadow ban, bro, that's what you'd be having to do. That's true, too. That's actually but, a better way go to go on, backwards. Go on, go on. Well, I was wondering if you could think of other ways that people are hustling backwards. Okay. Uh, when Kanye did his interview and he was trying to school people about like culture and fashion and how the way he was basically saying like, the music business, we're all slaves. He's like, that's why I said slavery is a choice. And like, look at these contracts. Look at all these contracts I have. And the point is, you're hustling backwards if you're in an industry, or let's just say you're in the music business, and you're trying to make that your main thing. Mm -hmm. It's almost like, no, 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 no. You need to reframe and rethink the entire thing. Like, you're more of a media uh, uh, company, mm-hmm. um, you know, you're you're a brand, you're a media company. You um, and then, you know, you influence culture. You know, th- that's the value of like a money bag, yo, or somebody from the Migos. It's like, okay, what your sponsors look like? What's your endorsements? You know what I'm saying? Like, don't tell me about your fucking publishing and your residuals. Mm-hmm. It's like that's that's over there. Like that should be the little money you don't even see, you don't even touch. Like your little touring money. It should be like. Offset's doing a thing with GQ. He's going to collab with Chanel. You know what I mean? Like, he's got to deal with Reebok. It's got to be that type of shit. Uh, NASCAR's giving him a quarter million to fucking tweet a couple things. You know what I mean? Like, it's like reframe it completely to where it's like, no, no, no. You're an influencer that does music on the side. Or you're a media personality content mm-hmm. creator. And, and, and that's why I was giving Money Man props because he's carving out, he could be potentially carving out a whole other audience by hitting a different angle. Yeah. Instead of being a guy still holding up stacks of paper money. <laughs> it's like, bitch, let me see some crypto or a gold bar. You know what I'm saying? You know what really grinds my gears is when people call somebody a thought leader oh, and, and their thoughts are just they're nonsense right like we hear this all the time when it comes to like lebron james like thought leader a thought leader so the term thought leader has always irked me because a lot of the time i never noticed that it's being said by people on the left i mean it's it's used by everybody but i hear it a lot more by people on the left when it comes to people like lebron james or a lot of these uh uh just influencer personalities or just famous people honestly i guess anybody that has a lot of a huge audience would be a type of thought leader because they're talking to a large audience but it's unfortunate when the consensus is that like those are really bad ideas or bad thoughts that you as a thought leader. I've never really noticed that. I've never paid attention. Yeah. Now you're going to hear it all the time when they call people thought leaders. Thought leader. And then just look at the people that they're calling a thought leader and wonder why would they, you know, why it's, would a corporate it, media refer to this person as a thought leader? It's almost like a little word game. Yeah. It's a little word game. It's like when you call, it's like when you call um, somebody a white supremacist. Just cause, <laughs> just cause they're like, what? What's in the jab? They're again? the black face of white supremacy. Yeah, the brown face of white supremacy. It's just a, a, I think it was a quote by um, what is his name? So- Soul. What's Thomas Soul. Yeah, Thomas Soul. He was basically saying like, racism is being kept on life support by race baiters mm-hmm. and people who use it. He's like, 
it's like ketchup. They just put you could put it on anything. <laughs> <laughs> He's, it's just like racism everywhere I, you look. I actually screenshotted some from him. I, I hope I screenshotted it from him. But speaking of ketchup, real quick, random. Mm -hmm. Do you put? Would you put ketchup on most things? Do you think? Not most. No. What do you mean most? Like what's most? Eggs. Eggs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like maybe. I mean, when hash were, browns. Hash browns. But when you were like, maybe if you didn't have a, a refined palate, you would put it maybe on steak the way Trump did. <laughs> Oh, Trump. See, there's a list of things I, I, I don't agree with Trump. That's got to be one of them. I'm glad you said that. And he should have fired Fauci. That's one of the main well, things yeah. he should have did. Before we move into RBT, if I yeah, can't yeah, find yeah. this little thing, mm -hmm. tell me why. I'll, I'll tell you what I heard a long time ago about that and why it completely turned. I didn't really have like a positive or negative thing about that whole steak with uh, ketchup thing because when I was younger, I would. Like, I, I mean, I don't know shit about steak. I also ate it more well done than not because you don't know shit about meat when you're younger. Mm -hmm. But uh, but go ahead. Tell me. No, no, no. I'm 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 wanting to hear what what the hell you where are you going with this? So the four the thing. 4D chess thing that we always hear about Trump, right? Okay. About how he's always like so many steps ahead of people. Okay. If you remember correctly, was this 16 or 17? However many years ago it was, the media made such a big deal. You know, the left wing media made such a big deal about Trump eating his his steak uh, more well done and with ketchup. Uh -huh. But then the people that were more like moderate right to right were saying that. That actually helped Trump because a lot of his, the, the base that he was going after are the kind of middle America people who say, I like my steak with ketchup. I have no problem with that. Why do you why are you shitting on the, the you know president for eating his steak with ketchup? Are you talking down on us now? And then it turned into one of those things where like, yeah, what is wrong with that? You know what I mean? Oh, wow. High society when types. When did this debate happen? I'm a couple years that. ago. It was a couple oh. years ago. This actually might have been before you were even paying attention. And people made the argument about the ketchup. Like, hey, leave ketchup alone. He's yeah. a man of the people. And it became one of those high society left Democrats are looking down at President Trump for, you know, saying that he eats his steak with ketchup. They were trying to, you know, this RPT talk we're about to do next. <laughs> yeah. But they were literally just trying to do a hit piece, like false narrative, the same way they always say Kanye needs to take his meds. Yeah. And Ice Cube is a sellout. Meanwhile, y'all done got the real racist in it. <laughs> That's true. Y'all done elected the real deal racist. Damn, I didn't say that. That's it. compromised. But any hoozle, we'll pro I'll probably find it by the time. Compromised we get to, uh, by billions of dollars from the CCP. Hey, that Yorona meme that you posted was hilarious. Hey, uh, Nancy oh, thank you, thank you. Hey, I just conjured up Chris Rock. Billions, yeah, compromised. Billions of dollars from the CCP. <laughs> That's how uh, Chris Rock would say. From the CCP. That's how he would have done it when he was still, you know, speaking his mind. You know what I'm talking about? But hey, uh, thank you guys so much. I know that was very political. But hey, you know, everything's politicized these days. <laughs> no, it wasn't. no, it wasn't. It was like kind of. -ish. I mean, some people are going to interpret it as that. Like, Chingo mentioned the Federal Reserve and, and the way he says fiat currency is a triggering word and it's buzzword. This is Monday's episode. This is all patrons. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Okay, bet. Then, yeah, we, we then, good. We Gucci. Then, then I had a good time. We, we in here Gucci. <laughs> Let's move over now. By this time, guys, you will have heard Friday's episode. It was going to be, I'm sure it was fire. For sure. So we're going to do go do RPT. Seaway? Seaway. Okay. Me despido. Muchísimas gracias. Saludos a mi prima, mis, mis tíos. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're enjoying the shows, please spread the word. And maybe y'all can help us come up with like the studio's name. Like your mom's house is YMH Studios. Uh, Brendan Schaub has Thick Boy Studios. Um, what should ours be? We're gonna, let's let's, let let's put that in the Patreon. I'm mean, in the uh, in the Discord. I'm gonna do that right we'll now. We'll put that in the Discord. Yeah. What what should I name my studios? Because I'm serious about doing more of this. Thank you guys. Y'all be safe. Peace.